Rajat Sethi, if the BJP were to look at a map of India or the map tomorrow of the seats going to the, uh, uh, of the areas going to the polls, this will be one area they'll look at very closely. They won 12 out of 14 here last time, mainly even through the Vokaliga belt of Southern Karnataka. But they've since gone ahead and tied up with HD Kumaraswamy's JDS. So clearly the BJP is a little worried given what happened uh, in the 2023 assembly elections. They need an ally whom they called corrupt and dynastical only a year ago. How do you see the BJP in southern Karnataka in this election? Could this be a potential worry point for the BJP? Well, Rajdeep ji, I think uh, Karnataka was going to be an interesting election, but I don't know why, uh, you know, you can only ask Congress leadership, would they come out with this Muslim reservation boogie? Muslims were anyway voting for the Congress party. What do you electorally gain by giving them reservation right just a few hours before the campaigning was uh, uh, was No, no, closed. no. One minute, one minute. I've checked that and this reservations was notified by Virappa Moili's government in 94 and mm. in 95 Deva Gowda implemented it. So it's been, Wonderful. it's not as if it's something which has sprung as a surprise. Mm. No, wonderful. And can you please explain to me, since you've done so much research, why is it in news cycle? Or should I share the notification with the audience? No, the notification See, is the National Commission for ba Backward. No, no, the, the fact is it's not as if the Karnataka government, it, dude, the be, Karnataka I mean, government has not been hiding it. You're making the point that you believe that the Muslim reservation, the way it's being pitched just before the election, will hurt them. The point I'm making is not something new. It was part of their manifesto even in the 2023 elections. Well, Rajdeep ji, you have been a great analyst, but you've called me on the show for certain inputs. Yeah, I am sharing those inputs. A, 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 a clear-cut case in Karnataka was that, you know, certain seats were getting close in. And, uh, you know, and this was the reason why BJP had to go into the alliance as well. Uh, clearly, South uh, Karnataka was one area where they felt the weakest and they had to break uh, the stronghold of uh, vocal leaders when it comes to national elections by the Congress party. Mm -hmm. They went ahead and uh, ensured that they ally with JDS. JDS doesn't stand to gain a lot, by the way. JDS mm -hmm. is losing its minority votes. They, they, are, they are going away. But keep this in mind that together with BJP, the social engineering works considerably well in seats like Mandia and seats like Bangalore sure. Rural. And it I... adds up. It's an accretive alliance. It's not uh, something where both the parties are losing out. And on top of that, these layers of polarization and reverse polarization... Uh, courtesy the Congress and Congress approach of handling the Hubli issue as well as the reservation issues are twin issues to polarize Karnataka enough to swing and give a sweep for BJP in that state. Things could have been different had it been a month back uh, uh, us analyzing the elections of Karnataka. Interesting. Now, what no you're saying, what you're saying is there is polarization at one level on religious grounds, you believe, post Hubli, post uh, 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 the announcements that the Siddharamaya government has made, some say even the Rameshwaram cafe and the way that's played out. And on the other side, of course, there is the alliance, the arithmetic alliance between BJP and JDS, which across southern Karnataka comes to well over 50%. Ramakrishna Upadhyay, do you believe the BJP can repeat 2019 or is the Congress, which is in power there, it is also, remember, the bastion of both DK Shivkumar and Chief Minister Sidharamaya. Can the Congress actually give the BJP a fight this time in southern Karnataka? Well, Rajdeep, uh, as you know, tomorrow there are going to be elections for 14 seats. And out of that, 11 is being contested by the BJP and three by the JDS. And most of it is in the old Mysore area. And, uh, you know, what, two coastal and Malnad regions. So that being the case, there is a clear fight between the Congress and, on one hand and JDS on the other for the Okaliga belt. So it is in the Okaliga belt that the battle is going to happen. And that is where, you know, one has to carefully see how things move. Of no, course, is it 50 it 50? Is it a 50 50 battle or do you still believe because of the JD? Do you believe there will be vote? In, uh, will, the, will the JDS voter vote for the BJP? Will the BJP voter vote for JDS? That becomes critical. Should I, that happen? If there is yes, clear I vote think, transfer, advantage BJP? I think so. That seems to be happening. See, unlike the alliance between Congress and JDS in 2019, I see a clear alliance that's happened between the JDS and the JDS because there's no conflict between the two parties. You know, as you can see, BJP doesn't have too much of a vote back, and JDS has a lot votes. So these two, you know, coalesce in that way and have to help each other. So that's okay, you're saying, you're, you're you know, saying that the alliance, well, therefore, uh, it's a complementary. It's interesting what you're saying. You're saying it's a complementary alliance. 